I want a new monitor. Okay, so how about the Asus Rogue Swift OLED PG42UQ? Too big. But the Samsung OLED G8? It's a uh, top of the line. Too expensive. Right, that it is. Well then, the Alienware AW3423DWF? Ultrawide isn't endgame. Man's got a point, and so did you guys in your comments in our last video when you said that really it's all about 27 to 32 inch. Anything else is an end game. Recently, there's been a lot of crazy OLED gaming monitors hitting the markets. Everything from ultra wide to flexing, morphing monitors to TVs being converted into gaming monitors and being put on desktops. These aren't mainstream and arguably not end game because of that, because they're either too big or too weird to be end game. So let's talk about less than 32 inch gaming OLED monitors. Let's start with the first one. It's the LG 27 GR95QE-B. We already spoke about this in its own video because it's one of the first to come to the market. I'm not considering all the big crazy monitors. I'm talking about versus the smaller form factor ultra wides that we've seen from Samsung's QD OLED. But the summary of that video was that it is the fastest OLED gaming monitor. It is also got the better form factor. But I did highlight some concerns with that monitor. We're not quite sure whether LG is going to give us that burden warranty that Dell has given. And there are some question marks about the brightness. It has half the brightness of the QD OLEDs from Samsung. So you might say, okay, so we're going to pay $999 for this LG. Is it really endgame? And yeah, you might be right. Asus certainly thinks you're right because they have gone and actually claimed that what they are releasing is the 1440p endgame in the form of an OLED gaming monitor. It is the Asus Rogue Swift PG27 AQBN. It is based on the same Samsung W OLED panel that we spoke about in the previous monitor. So it's going to have the same 240 hertz 0.03 ms but asus is taking it one step further and increasing the brightness without deteriorating any other performance now that is certainly going to make it a much better contender maybe even better than than the alien wears in terms of specs yes it's going to be very expensive but we can be sure that they will tune the hell out of this thing and make it one of the best if not the best out there unfortunately we don't have any indications yet on pricing or release date all we have is a teaser video but let's see there's talk of them revealing this in ces 2023 which is in january so maybe in a few more weeks we'll know more about this panel one drawback still and a lot of people still claim this is part of endgame this monitor will not have a glossy finish so you might say this is an endgame either well, some of you guys might remember Eve Spectrum back in the days. This was a startup company that came up with some very minimalistic, beautiful looking uh, monitors that ticked every single box and were glossy finish monitors. Well, they're back and they've rebranded themselves away from Eve. They now call themselves Dou or Dow. I'm going to go with Dou. And they're releasing a OLED gaming monitor based on the same LG panel we spoke of before. It's called the Doe Spectrum ES07E2D. Let's say it's based on the same LG panel, but Doe has actually gone and cheekily put a direct comparison on their website to a major monitor brand, which looks exactly like the LG, by the way, and done a side-by-side -side comparison of all the specs. It's the same panel. It is 240 hertz, 0.03 ms. But the things that it has more than the LG is the glossy finish, they are specific about the warranty, which is three year normal manufacturer's warranty plus a two year burn-in warranty. And they're very specific and clear about the connectivity options. Specifically of interest is the addition of HDMI 2.1a. Also, there is a USB-C high-speed charging port and it's all packaged into very minimalistic, clean, simple designs. So this might float your boat, but as I say, proceed at your own risk because Back in the days of Eve Spectrum, you may remember there were pre-orders and a lot of refund issues, also some technical issues with earlier adopters. So buy at your own risk. 
So now you might say, okay, that finally ticks almost all the boxes and you want for a 1440p end game gaming monitor, but you're not taking the risk. Well, then to that, all I can say is end game in gaming terms, in my opinion, it's like a rainbow. The closer you get to it, the further away it gets. One thing's for certain though, these OLED monitors and the general flood of OLED gaming monitors coming to the market is definitely bringing us a lot closer to that rainbow. Also, you can help us get closer to our rainbow by giving us a like and a subscribe. And if these panels don't interest you at all, then there is more good news. There is more coming. There is rumors of a Samsung QD OLED 27 inch gaming monitor coming to the market. There is nothing concrete at this stage, but we can be certain that when Samsung brings out a QD OLED Odyssey gaming monitor, it's going to be expensive and it's going to be top of the line. Plus, if you're getting all the specs that we already know exist for QD OLED, i.e. very good color performance, better than WOLED, blazing fast speeds, and a better burden performance. So this is one that may satisfy your endgame needs. Now, some of you might say, actually, 1440p isn't endgame at all. It's all about 4K. Well, in that case, AU Optronics, which is a another display manufacturer similar to LG and Samsung, they're working on a 4K 32-inch or sub-32-inch display. There's not many rumors or not much news about when this will be released, but it is something that they are known to be working on for quite some time. So maybe it's something we'll see in 2023. Again, more of these coming to the market. Overall, competition will increase. Prices for OLED will come down. It's a win-win for us, whether we buy AU Optronics or not. Anyway, that sums up this video. I hope this was interesting for you. As always, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.